today is the 13th disciple. I started thinking about this here uh, a few days ago, basically, what would it be like if more people in the Bible that Jesus interacted with had actually decided to follow him? Now, I think the first thing that most people think is, well, wait a second. There's only 12 disciples. There's only supposed to be 12 disciples. So that's the way God ordained it. That's the way God predestined it. And I disagree with that. Because, honestly, to tell you the truth, I kind of have a different perspective on predestination. Now, I don't want to spend my whole message going into some Calvinistic argument of uh, predestination and you know God's sovereignty. And I mean, basically, to say that something is predestined means that it was previously destined or the destination was previously set as in everything is already set up that we're just basically the puppets and um, God's the audience and he's you know and the puppeteer at the same time and he's making everything happen and and uh, if that's the case then there are people who are already previously their destination is set for heaven and there are some, there's already people who are previously their destination is set for hell. It doesn't make much sense to me. I mean, yeah, you might disagree with me. That's fine. I can agree to disagree with you, but it just doesn't make sense to me. And I wanted to get into uh, something here. Go ahead and turn to Mark 10. If God had predestined people to go to hell, it kind of makes him a monster. I mean, you know... It, the idea that God has already set everything up and we just kind of walk through it all, it doesn't leave much room for love. It doesn't leave much room for uh, freedom. And it seems to me, when I see the Bible, when I look at the Bible, and I get rid of all my religious ideas and my preconceived notions about God and the way that I thought he was based upon what someone told me, but just look at it for what it says. I see a book that shows... God's interaction with a world that he has made free. Man's freedom and what they did with it. Uh, when you look at the Bible that way, it really kind of changes your perspective on a lot of these different stories. Uh, you see that God is this loving God from the very beginning and all the way through. And he made this creation that he wanted to give the opportunity to choose what they want to do or not want to do. I see God above time, above, uh, beyond time, and the creator of time. That he knows the beginning from the end. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that God does not know the beginning from the end. Uh, he knew what you would do before you, do, before you did it. And I don't believe that's an argument to basically say, well, if he knew what you would do before you did it, you're predestined. No, because he's still giving you the freedom to choose. If I was to ask you what your favorite color was and you said blue, you had the choice to choose you had the freedom of choice to choose any color that you wanted to and you chose blue. But God knew you were going to say it before you even said it because he's outside of time. He knows the beginning from the end. So, I started thinking about this in relation to the story uh, here in Mark 10. A lot of people refer to this man as the rich young ruler. And my question is, and if you're familiar with the story, I'm going to read it here in a second, but my question is, look at this in verse 17, and as he was setting out on a journey, Jesus said it, getting ready to set on a journey, uh, a man ran up to him and knelt before him and began asking him, good teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Now, my question is, did Jesus know that this man was going to show up? You can say, well, Jesus is God, he knows everything. Okay, possibly he knew this was going to happen. Did he know that this man, this unnamed, never in any of the Gospels is it, did they give him a name. They call him young, they call him a ruler, they call him rich. They don't give him a name. But did Jesus know this man that he was getting ready to interact with would be someone he'd call to be a disciple? Possibly. To tell you the truth, I believe that, yes, that he saw this man as someone who would be one of his disciples, who would follow him. And the interesting thing about this man in Mark 10, 17, the rich man's always gotten a bad rep in Christianity. They've always, he's always been put off as being this heartless, selfish, greedy, 
uh, person. You know, growing up, I, I remember the little flannel graph things, and you got the little story of the rich man, and he comes to see Jesus, and he was upset because he had all these things, so he went away, and, and the camel, and the needle, and how the... Uh, the rich man got a bad rep, and he didn't deserve it. You know, some people, oh, well, he was bad, and he didn't deserve eternal life. You know, why? Why did he... Why do you think that he didn't deserve eternal life? And most Christians would answer, well, because he's rich. He's rich. And, you know, the, the, in the Bible, there's a, a no rich guy clause. There's a clause there that basically says that if you're rich, you can't be a disciple of Jesus. Um, Jesus had spent a lot of time, uh, and I'm being sarcastic, Jesus spent a lot of time with uh, Buddhist monks and learned that the importance of aestheticism, that if you just give up everything you have, then you'll enter life. That's how Christians have taught it for so long. You know, just get rid of all your possessions, sell them all, and then you could follow Jesus. If it takes an aesthetic to be a Christian, and if it takes this sort of um, commitment, uh, then we're all in a lot of trouble. Now, so, let me ask you this. People have this idea of Jesus that um, he was poor. The lowly Jesus. You know, you've probably heard that before in a song. Um, hopefully not, because if you haven't, that means you haven't went to some church where they talk like that. Uh, Jesus just barely getting by. Poor, you know, barefooted Jesus walking the countryside. Uh, it's, that's silly. That is not the Jesus I see in the Bible. First of all, uh, the question i got to ask somebody who thinks that way. My first question is, did you, did you forget about Christmas? Did you forget about the Magi? Uh, who brought gifts of gold. Um, did you forget that Jesus had a treasure? I mean, I, I don't have a treasure. Um, I think most of us don't. I mean, unless you're very wealthy watching this, which thanks for watching. Uh, but, I mean, if you're, hey, I don't have a treasure. Uh, Jesus had a treasure. The only reason you need a treasure is if you have a treasure. I mean, if I had, you know, uh, five pennies to rub together, why do I need some guy to tell me, okay, how much money do I have? Well, we still have the same five pennies. Okay. Uh, no. He had a treasure. Not only that, this is an interesting thing. The, Jesus wore such expensive underwear that Roman soldiers gambled to get a hold of it at the cross. Jesus was not poor. Jesus was not a poor man. Um, and the other thing, and this is something interesting in the scripture that we're reading in Mark 10, when Jesus... Uh, condemns the poor man, saying, how hard is it for a wealthy man to enter into the kingdom of God? Uh, the disciples pipe up, quick, well, who could be saved? They were, they were, it says they were troubled. They were astonished. They were amazed. You know, when you see in verse 23, 24, 25, all the way through 28, you see something going on here, that if these people were poor people, if the disciples were poor, if Jesus was poor, this whole conversation would happen. Because number one, they were troubled that it's harder for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God than for a camel to go through an eye of the needle. So the question these people had is, whoa, whoa, wait a second, we're troubled here. Um, why? Because they were rich. They had to. I mean, I'm sorry, you can argue with me all you want, you can disagree with me, but if I'm poor and somebody says that um, uh, a, a rich man, it's going to be hard for them to enter the kingdom of God, and I hear it that way and I'm poor, I'd just be like, hey amen. Those rich people, <laughs> that's how most people think. And that's not true. That's not true at all. And I love it how uh, Peter speaks up. He's like, well, we left everything. What do we get? See, they had an idea. Uh, they got a hold of this idea that Jesus was preaching. And it was way beyond just being rich or not being rich. It was way beyond that this rich means bad and poor means good. That is such a crazy Eastern mystic, uh, just crappy idea, honestly, when it comes down to it, that got its way into Christianity during the, the monastery days of the monks that used to beat themselves and all this weird stuff. It never was central to the biblical times that this Bible was written in. Never. So, my question is, when, when Christians give this rich man, this rich young ruler, a bad rap, my question is, are you jealous? Are we jealous of rich people? Are Christians jealous of people who have money? 
take some time, do research. I mean, search something online. I mean, any of these so-called prosperity preachers, I love it when people use that word. You know, do a search and find, you know, Christians, they hate them. They're mad, they're upset. That guy flies around in a jet. That guy has nice clothes. That guy drives a nice car. So what? Are you jealous? The Bible says that every good and perfect gift comes from above. Um, if these guys have good gifts, they're from God. You, know, uh, you, you trying to get into their mind and argue their intentions, I mean, that's wrong. It's not your place to argue and judge another man's servant and judge another man's intentions. You know, you could say that you're, you know, you're watching me today and I'm doing this video, and you could say, oh, he's just doing that video because he's trying to get into heaven. You can't judge my heart. I'm not. I, I'm already going to heaven. Uh, I'm doing this video because I love doing this. I love talking about the Bible. I love talking about the Word of God. I love talking to people about this. So you can't judge another man's heart. So what is? Why is it that Christians are so jealous? I don't know. Why? Why did this rich man have a bad? Is it safe to lay?